Welcome to Choose Life, a program of All Christians Fellowship Mission, a caring church raising Christ-like disciples who will be agents of transformation in the world. Let's now join God's servant, Reverend William Okoye, for today's message. If you are living a life that is always expecting evil, wherever evil is, even if it's 100 miles away, it will be drawn to you. But if you have a positive mindset, that believes that because God is on your side, because you are a child of the living God, his goodness and his mercies will be your portion today and all the days of your life, and you expect good. God makes things like that, attract them, draw them from wherever they are to you. Shout hallelujah. On the basis of the promises of God, you should expect nothing less than his goodness and his mercies to follow you today and all the days of your life. I don't know about you. My future is as bright as the promises of God. Shake nearest person to you and say, My future is as bright as the promises of God. It was Shanbach, a blessed memory that once said to the congregation where he was preaching. He said, God has revealed to me the names of the two angels he assigned to guide me. And people we are wondering how close this man had been to God that God went out of his way to reveal the names of two angels that he has assigned to guide him. He said the name of one is goodness, the second one is mercy. And they will follow him all the days of his life. I don't know about you. Shout hallelujah. You have a right as God's child to expect his goodness and his message to follow you today and all the days of your life. Hope is being able to see that there is light despite all the darkness. That is hope. Seeing a silver linen in the midst of all the darkness, all the storms, all the challenges. Of, regardless of how dark it is, you always see a silver linen. Because one with God is a majority. No weapon that's fashioned against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment shall come. Say they shall gather together but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against you shall fall for your sake. That's the word of God. I don't care what I see, what I feel, what I think. The word of God cannot be broken. If you stand long enough, believe in the word of God, it will come to pass. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> keep hope alive. Shake the nearest person to you and say, keep hope alive. Now let me share with you how God strengthens us to continue to hope. Because he knows how vital hope is. In our daily living as God's children. So many times he goes out of his way to help us keep hope alive. Turn with me to the book of Genesis chapter 15. I am going to read from verse 1 to 6. After these things the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what would thou give me, seeing I go childless? 
and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is my hair. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thy hair, but he that shall come forth out of thy own bowels shall be thy hair. And he brought him forth abroad, and said, Look now toward heaven. And tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. That's the story of our father Abraham, our father in the faith. After God made a promise to him that he was going to bless him with children, that would be difficult to number. Several years after that, nothing has happened. And just as any human being, Abraham was not really sure of what is going to happen next. And God, who knows how badly we need a hope in order to live normal lives, visited him again and again until that miracle came to pass. This time, God said, I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. Anybody that has revelation of what that means will not be complaining again. Would have simply drop on his knees and say, God, I have everything I need. Thank you. Because he didn't say, I am going to bless you. He said, I am your exceeding great. I have given myself to you. I'm your reward. If you have God, what else do you need? But because of our narrow way of looking at life and our shortcomings as human beings, our limitations, Abraham still, even after God said, I am your shield and you exceeding great reward he said but you have not given me any child i am going childless and you are telling me that you are my exceeding great reward what does that mean and god grabbed the man and took him outside and said look up to the heavens and abraham came out and looked at the firmament and he saw stars god said count the stars and let me know how many they are he said your children will be as many as the stars Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now, what does it mean? Why did God have to go out of his way to bring this man out and tell him to count stars? Do you know why? Because when things are critical and he was discouraged, he will remember the stars. Shout hallelujah. He will remember what God told him. He will remember the stars. So God goes out of his way that way to keep our hope alive. With all the struggles and challenges he was going through, in between the time God made the promise and the time the promise came to pass, he was looking at the stars. When temptations come to doubt God, he remembered the stars. Now I'm sure that there are some of you who God has shown some stars. He has spoken to you about what he wants to do with your life and has shown you some things. And no matter how things are, how rough you remember, is to show you that he said, I'm coming. Just hold on. Hold on to what I show you. I am coming. I'm not going to let you down. Hallelujah. Yeah. But let us look further. Genesis chapter 17, verse 1 to 8. And when Abraham was 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be that perfect. What has happened between the time he saw him last and this time again? If you read chapter 16, you see that he had waited and waited and the wife had given up and said, Abraham, look, this your faith is uh, getting too much for me. I think we need to apply wisdom. Maybe God is expecting us to use our senses. Go into this my maid. Maybe that's the way God planned it. Let's be wise and not be foolish. And Abraham having stood by faith and trusted God and so on and and the man was almost doing this thing. He yielded to the woman's suggestion and went into Haggai and the lady became pregnant. And I've given birth to Ishmael that is still smelling all over the place. You know, God is an amazing being. You would have expected him after the wife suggested that for God to intervene and say, don't, don't do it, don't do it. Wouldn't it have been nice? But he said, no, I don't want to treat you like a baby. You decide what you want. That's why he created the free moral agents. He said, you know clearly what I have told you. I have gone out of my way to bring you out and show you the stars and so on. If that is not enough for you, do whatever you want to do. And the man obeyed the wife and after they have messed up and they have had the Ishmael that is smelling all over the place, God now came and said, Abraham, 
Look at what he said. Look at the way he addressed him. There. And when Abraham was 90 years old and 9, that is 99 years, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty God. What does that mean? There's nothing impossible with me. I'm still letting you know that although you are fooled around, I made the promise. I'm able to bring my word. I am the almighty. It's not some mighty. Almighty. Everybody say almighty. almighty. Not some mighty. Almighty. He said, I am the almighty God. If you walk before me and be perfect, I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. Hallelujah. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations out of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, or the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. <laughs> Do you see another thing? that God introduced here. He has gone and changed the name of the man. From Abraham to what? What is the meaning of Abraham? Father of many nations. Has he gotten the child yet? So people will wake up in the morning to greet you. It's no more Abraham. It's now Abraham. That is father of many nations. The man had no child and he had been waiting for all these years. The Bible said that God called those things that be not as if. As far as it's concerned, it's already settled. Once he has spoken, it's settled. All you need to do is to patiently wait in hope. Choose life, Choose life. Choose that you may live, Choose that you may live. Says, says the Lord. Say. Join us next week for the concluding part of this message. Dear listener, thank you for being part of today's program. If you want to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, pray this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I accept I've sinned against you. Have mercy on me. Forgive me in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, wash me with your precious blood. Give me grace to live the rest of my life for you. Thank you for making me your child in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And for the rest of our dear listeners, gracious Father, bless them and give them the grace to live by the word they have just had, that it might be well with them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. God richly bless you. You just listened to Choose Life, a program of All Christians Fellowship Mission. I believe God has touched your life through this message from his servant, Reverend William Okoye, the General Overseer of All Christians Fellowship Mission. This message and several others on CDs, DVDs, and books by Reverend William Okoye are available at number 2, Lagoni Close, Off Nile Street, Maitama, Abuja. Get your copies now. For bookings, cancelling, and prayers, Call 0803-588-7764. The number again, 0803-588-7764. Or log on to www.acfmission.org. That is www.acfmission.org for resource materials. Join our High Impact Worship Service this Sunday as to you. Jesus saves heals and provides. Let's meet again same time, same station next week for the concluding part of this message from Reverend William Okoye. God bless you.